When I first started Principal Analytics Prep, the Data Analytics Bootcamp, I finally took the plunge and made a Facebook. When you first sign up for Facebook, the first thing it asks you to do is to upload your contact list. The reason why they do that is so they can figure out which one of your friends are already on Facebook and can make a connection for you. For a reason that I'm going to explain later, I said no thank you. Even though I said no, Facebook still has a list of people they recommend that I friend. And that's shockingly accurate. Most of the people that were suggested are people I know. It was all a little creepy. I'm new to Facebook and yet it already knows me. How is that possible? The trick is something called the reverse lookup. Let's say I have a friend called Amy Thomas. And when Amy first joined Facebook, she uploaded her contact list. By doing that, Facebook knows about me, knows my name, knows my email, my phone number, my address, and pretty much any information that Amy stored about me. So when I created my account, all Facebook needed to do is to look for my name, email, or phone number in all of the Facebook members' contact list. And that's how it generates that list of suggested friends. What does this all mean? We are all custodians of the private data of our family and friends. That's why it's so hard to hide from Facebook, LinkedIn, or any of the social media platforms. When you upload your contact list, you are betraying all those friends who are trying to not be on those platforms. It's even worse than that. You may have authorized a website or an app to access your email account. By doing so, you are allowing that app to download all of your emails, find out who you're talking to, and summarize and catalog the topics so the details of every conversation, and to know the email addresses of all of your friends. So not only do they know your friends' names and email addresses, they are able to find out your friends' employer, their children's schools, what car they recently purchased, and whether they were depressed yesterday, and more. Reading your emails is now OTAC. The next frontier are the IoT devices such as Amazon, Echo, or Google Home. These things are listening to and recording all of the conversations in your home. So again, not only do they know about you, they find out everything about your family, your visitors, your friends, and so on. Businesses are constantly encouraging us to betray our friends' data. Think about all those personality tests that are circulating around social media. I have a friend who a few weeks ago took that Myers-Briggs test for the first time. This is the personality test that classifies people by four-letter acronyms such as INTJ or ENTP. She was very excited about the test and she immediately forwarded the email to her closest friends and wanted to compare results with them. If I'm on the other side collecting the data, you've just given me a bounty of data. Not only have I learned about my friend and her personality, I now know who her friends are, what their emails are, as well as their personalities. Who might buy this data from me? Well, your employer, who might want to use your personalities to predict your job performance. Health insurance companies that might want to know if you're chronically depressed. Entertainment companies who think that knowing your personalities help them predict what movies or games you'd like to play. Some of them may be making your life better, while others are just going to enrich themselves at your expense. Do you care if your friends hand over your data to Facebook or other social media platforms? Let us know by making a comment below. If you like what you heard today, please like our video, subscribe to our channel, and spread the word. Please also send us any ideas you have about future topics as we demystify the world of data and algorithms. Comment your ideas below. Principal Analytics Prep. Prepping you for the data revolution. Mm -hmm.